to see you people thank you for waking up early to watch this life-giving conversation and i'm sure you're going to have a blast all right why don't we pray lord thank you so much for this word thank you that it is going to give life to everybody who's watching it right now and those who are going to watch it much later thank you that your word is our life and it gives us life it it it, it refreshes us it rebuilds us it so thank you lord for your word today may it bring forth fruit a hundredfold in our lives in jesus name i pray amen hi janet thanks for watching thanks for being here so guys um Today I'm going to be sharing from a story that I love reading and every time I read it, it's like I've never read it before. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Um, bye guys. I'm saying bye to the people who are going to jog. Um, so, Second Chronicles chapter 20. But before I go there, I want to tell like a brief story. So something funny about me that you don't know so i like winning so it was so crazy that when i was younger <clears throat> when we'd play games like snakes and ladders hmm? and the snake eats me i'm on 99 you guys i would almost cry i would feel like crying um monopoly eh? i go be there and i run out of money so one of the things about me is that i don't play board games very much but i like making noise around the board game why because i just don't like being the loser as in i just don't like being the loser so if you're there and you like winning and winning big you're going to enjoy this story because i'm going to share this story the way god has been teaching me through it in this season and i know it will bless you so let's kick off second chronicles chapter 20 is where i'm reading from so please just open there and just follow through the story of jehoshaphat and how he he they lashed these guys of moab and the ammonites so in verse 3 um so first of all i'd always read this story from the middle hmm? from the middle there somewhere it says position yourself stand still and see the salvation of the lord or the part where it says you do not need to fight this battle but the battle is not yours but the lord that's where i used to start from but this time i said okay let me read from the beginning and and and, and god in this season when this season had just started i said let me read and see and so in verse 3 it says Okay, I'll start from the beginning. Verse 1, it happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat, right? Then some came and told Jehoshaphat saying, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazazon. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Simba Wakatiao, I realized that Jehoshaphat feared. He feared who? But guess what happened? What did he do when he feared? He set himself to seek the Lord. When Jehoshaphat feared, he set himself the first response. Jehoshaphat's first response when he experienced fear was, eh, Jesus, what are you saying? So immediately he feared. He's, Persis, you made it. <laughs> Last time Persis came at 8, she locked the said, Solo, may I want to sleep? I said, no, the thing is at 7.30. Thanks for being here, Persis. So I was saying, Jehoshaphat set himself to seek the Lord. Immediately he feared. And so I want to ask us, friends, in this season, hmm, coronavirus came. The first thing I want to ask you, when you had, you probably felt experienced fear. You're like, oh God, what are we going to do? How are we going to escape this? But then what was your first response? Immediately you feared. Given fear, yes, okay, it came. Then what happened after that? He set himself to seek the Lord. He didn't seek him, set himself to find out where, how, how far has the great multitude reached? Where has it reached? Where has it gone? Um, how far are these people from the valley? over what 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 and some of us that's what we made that's what we did when when said corona has reached oh okay what districts has it reached uh is it in kampala yet in fact do you guys remember eh? when they had not yet you know I, I, that thing really amused me when corona had when when they when they had not yet declared a case here eh? it's like social media was waiting for a case to be declared you know, immediately one case one case every platform had one case like instead of seeking the lord the first response is 
to engage the fear and build it up more and okay what what else what basically feeding the fear instead of faith and so friends i want to tell you today fear may come given because you see me i'd always read you know when i read jehoshaphat for some reason when i read this story i used not to see that part of he feared me i used to come from the part of he set himself to think the lord to seek the lord so i thought eh hey, mama jehoshaphat him is so hey, mama he didn't get fear hey, mama him what he was just there and immediately they told him the multitude he just went to, no the guy feared ko but what mattered and what made the game change is that when he feared his first response was he set himself to seek the lord yeah let's continue reading then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house before the court. Go down, go down, go down. And, and he started talking to the Lord. And somewhere in verse 9 it says, he said, they, and, and this is what Jehoshaphat was telling his father, he said, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence. For your name is in this temple and cry out to you in affliction and you will hear and save us. Friends, when we go to God, let us expect God to answer. God is not there oh, he wants, uh, wanting us to bench. No, he says, um, you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. He's not like he's there and you're going to beg him. And, and it's like, he's, you understand, he'll answer you in dresses. No, Jehoshaphat went knowing that when I go to this guy, he will hear and save verse 9 it says i will cry out in, in, in to you in our affliction and you will hear and save us friends i'm inviting you go to god with the expectation that you may be faced with a great multitude you may be faced with a season that you did not expect but when i go to god he will hear and he will do something about it so when jehoshaphat went to the lord he expected god to do something about it yeah and then continue I, I i want to take us on this journey so I'm, i'll be last looking down uh, my book is here let me get it um yes let's continue go down go down to verse 12. it says that this is what jehoshaphat says oh our god will you not judge them for we have no power against this great multitude that is against us nor do we know what to do but our eyes are upon you so the first time i read this thing or at least the many times i have read this thing i used to think that oh kabambi kabambi jehoshaphat he has no power kabambi poor he he has no choice so i started asking but jesus did jehoshaphat have any other help besides you Maybe physically, like, what, was he rich? Because really, he, he was like, Bambi, because when you read that verse, verse 12, we're in Second Chronicles 20. For those who have just joined us, that story of Jehoshaphat, <coughs> King Jehoshaphat of Judah. Verse 12 says, oh, for we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do. And so I used to read it of, and I used to add, Kabambi Jehoshaphat, he has no power. Kabambi. So I asked Jesus, but tell me, uh, first tell me about Jehoshaphat. Let me first understand who this guy was. Now, if you're, if you're reading your Bible, first open 2 Chronicles chapter 17 and you see. I'm going to go right there. <coughs> right now, 2 Chronicles chapter 17. This is the guy who said that we have no power. We have no power, but our eyes are upon you. Hmm? Uh, verse 17. I'm going to read... Verse 6, it says, his heart, this is Jehoshaphat, his heart took delight in the way of the Lord. Moreover, he removed the high places and the wooden images from Judah. Hmm? And I wrote down, I wrote down some details. I wrote down some details of what I discovered about this guy. Hmm? So friends, I want to tell you, Jehoshaphat wasn't some, oh, um, because Jehoshaphat, for him to seek the Lord. Because sometimes we think and I have been there where you're thinking that, no, you seek the Lord only when you've run out of options. Do you understand? As in, if you still have things going for you, first be enjoying, then when things get tough, eh, you'll seek the Lord. So, Jehoshaphat wasn't like that. The first thing I want you to see, in Second Chronicles chapter 17, verse 5, it says, Therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand, and all Judah gave presents to Jehoshaphat, and he had riches and honor in abundance 
Jehoshaphat, this guy who is saying we have no might and our eyes are upon you, wasn't a poor guy. Don't be there reading it and say, oh, kabambi, I never be here to seek the Lord. No. He had sought, the, he had riches and honor in abundance. This guy who had set his heart to seek the Lord. And so it shows me that Jehoshaphat, to Jehoshaphat, God was his first option. Do you understand? God was his first option. The second thing I, I noticed, which is, it's a, I, I digress a bit, but I noticed this and I thought I would share with us. Look here, guys. If you've been listening in different teachers teaching and all that, you realize that we have been told that this season is a planting season. This season is a planting season. And I was amazed to see what Jehoshaphat did. These guys who went to fight, whom he made kneel down and start praying when the Ammonites were coming. You listen to what he did before the war came. Also, in the third year of his reign, he sent his leaders. Uh, this is Second Chronicles chapter 17. Please follow with me from verse 7 to 9. Also in the third year of his reign, he sent his leaders, Ben, whatever, Obadiah, Zechariah, Nathel. What did he send them to do? To teach in the cities of Judah. And with them he sent Levites, Shemaiah, Nathaniah, Johan, da, 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 the Levites, and with them El Shema and Joham, the priests. Verse 9 in Second Chronicles 17 what it says is that, so they taught in Judah, today she's not only enjoying the preaching, but dancing over it. <laughs> Where's the Rehab? So they taught in Judah and had the book of the law of the Lord with them. Follow me, friends. They went throughout all the cities of Judah and taught the people. Guys, in Jehoshaphat's reign, hmm, he sent priests hmm, to all the cities of Judah to teach the people planting season i want to talk about this thing of planting season this thing of planting season hmm? these people who you're seeing fighting in second chronicles first chapter 20 these people had been being taught the word of god in all the cities you go and read it in second chronicles 17 so they did not wait for the war to come and then they start trying to plant seed and we've heard it time and time again this is the season of planting friends are you planting in this season i mean the devil is in trouble because now we have so much time to plant acres and acres of his word you see it he says they taught the people in judah and had the book of the law of the lord with them they went out all the cities of judah and taught the people these people who you're seeing fighting in second chronicles 20 had been planting the word of god in their hearts they had been planting the word. It's planting season. So the word before the tribal comes, before the war, the people had been planting the word. In, if you look at Second Chronicles chapter 17. Had, so by the time he comes and tells them hmm, that um, let's seek the Lord, let's proclaim a fast. They, he was not trying at the time when they said, okay, the great multitude is coming. It was not the time he was trying to teach the people the word. No, 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 no. Friends, planting happens before. Planting happens before, before the season comes. And this is a season to plant and prepare and prepare. But, I, but back to what I was showing you about Jehoshaphat, that Jehoshaphat was a powerful guy. And so it was his first resort. Um, Second Chronicles 17 verse 12, it says that Jehoshaphat became increasingly powerful. He became increasingly powerful. This Jehoshaphat guy, listen to the kind, I want you to go back and read for yourself. He, he had 3,000 mighty men. About 280,000 men led by some other guy, 200,000 men led by some other guy, 200,000 men who had a bow and a shield, 180,000 men prepared for war besides those he had sent out in the different cities. So friends, I want to tell you that this Jehoshaphat eh, who had set himself to seek the Lord was not some broke guy. God was his first option. God was his first resort. And so when we go back to our story, where it says that he feared but set himself to seek the Lord. God, friends, I want God to be our first resort. And I was thinking about this a lot today. I'm thinking it's easy for God to be your first resort when basically, okay, uh, you have no other option. But how about when in the physical you seem to have? And a funny thought came to me. I mean, you're like, guys, look, I have buffer of posho for six months. Bring it on Corona. Do you understand? So for you, you're just there. 
crashing. Why? Because God is not necessarily the first reason in life, but you have your car. But I saved up. You know, you're probably in the season. Yes, maybe it's like you saved up. So I have savings. Like, do you understand? God is not my. I have. I have options. I have options. Do you understand? So I will pray if things get tight. And so I wanted to bring this out to show you, friends, that Jehoshaphat wasn't. In, in, in the physical, it, he wasn't broke, he wasn't poor, he wasn't like Kamambi Jehoshaphat. No, 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 no. This guy had God as his first option. Psalm chapter 20 verse 7, what does it say? It says that some trust in chariots, but we will choose to trust the name of the Lord. And I want to read it in a version that I loved. It said, Psalm, one, well, Psalm 20 verse 7, it says, Some find their strength in their weapons and wisdom, but my miracle deliverance can never be in man can never be won by man our boast is in the lord our god who makes us strong and gives us victory that some find strength in the weapons in weapons and wisdom in physical strength but my miracle deliverance can never be won by men our boast friends is in the lord our god who makes us strong and gives us victory our boast is in the lord our god and so i'm going to dash back to second chronicles 20 and we continue going down so i want you to know guys that this jehoshaphat eh, who set himself to seek the lord was not a kabambi oh kabambi jehoshaphat no this was a guy who had stuff but he had realized that man i i think i want the victory of jesus i think i want god's victory i think i think chinkolela do you understand so let's continue right down the sec the next thing i want to show us today is that the first thing god addressed when he spoke to jehoshaphat was the fear the fear. God addressed fear and he said, he addressed it twice. He said, do not be dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours, but God's. And then he says it again in verse 17. Do not fear or dismayed. Go out tomorrow against them for the Lord is with you. And I looked up the word, uh, I looked up the word dismayed and I realized the word dismayed, what does it mean? The word dismayed means concern and distress caused by something unexpected. Have you ever been through something unexpected in your life? Like you were living your life and then Corona happened uh, and Corona happened. Like you're like, wow. <coughs> I mean, I went through one of those. I was living my life and I lost a very dearly loved friend of mine called my father. Like I was really living my life. Do you understand? You may have gone through a death that was sudden, a major financial loss, things that happen and you're like, wow, Jesus. Abandonment. This virus thing, this, this thing that came and just, wow, suddenly you're at home. It's, it's like, and what God is saying, if you, if you put, if you remove that dismay and use its interpretation, basically what God is saying is that do not be concerned because of this event that you did not expect. Friends, I'm telling you this morning, do not be concerned. Do not be, that's the meaning of being dismayed. And so God is telling you today, do not be concerned because of this event that you did not expect. For the battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord. Do not fear. Do not fear. That's the first thing that God addressed. That's the first thing that God addressed. Refuse to fear because fear is agreeing with the devil. Sorry, I'm just organizing the camera properly. Huh? Fear is agreeing with the devil. Hmm? And faith is saying, as we had uh, yesterday, uh, one of our pastors, B3, was saying, said, fear does not hurt a other, but a however, to the word of God. So faith is, be confident. The first thing Jesus had, God had to deal with, with Jesus, don't, don't stop fearing, stop fearing, stop fearing, stop fearing, stop fearing. Do not be concerned about this thing, this multitude that has come. I'm telling you, do not be concerned, but put your eyes on God. Put your eyes on God. And the next thing, I'm almost finishing. Before I hear, just some comments and some feedback. The second last thing I want to share is that the praise started before the victory came. The praise started before the victory came. Let me show you. It is right here. It says, what does it say? What does it say? <clears throat> Where is the praise part? Yes. Verse 19 of 2 Chronicles chapter 20. It says, Then the Levites and the children of Kohathites, of the Kohathites and the children of the Korahites, stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. Meanwhile, this was just after the, uh, the Lord had spoken through the prophet. As in before they saw the victory, they stood up and praised. And so friends, at the word of the Lord, begin to praise. Why? Because God's word is enough. God's word is enough, guys. God's word is enough. 
one of the people who helped me experience and understand this thing of God's word being enough hmm, was my father. So he was one of those people who, if he says something, Solomon, I'm going to do this thing. Look, eh, I will never ask again because why? He always, he just always comes through. Like, as in, in fact, it's so crazy. There's a time I had a phone. Eh? The phone broke. I had a phone. The phone broke. It shattered. You know when the screen shatters and it even starts to show like green, green. Wow. So I went to my dad. I said, but daddy, really, check this phone out. It's not representing you well. So he laughed. I said, oh, why? You relax. I'll buy for you a what? A phone. Look here. The moment he said that, his word was enough. I didn't ever ask him about phone. I just knew it was coming like a zin. I lived my life with my broken phone. Like I did a zin. Why? The word was enough. Why? Because I trust that person. And so because these guys trusted the word of God, they started to praise. His word is enough. What has God told you in this season? I want you to go back and write down the things that God has told you. And as I was reading this, I began to write down the words that God has spoken to me. I'm an economic powerhouse. I'm a disease-free zone. Oba, I am an influence in my extended family. What, 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 what? And I began to praise. Why? Because I am confident that the words that God has spoken to me are going to come to pass. What has God spoken to you about this season? What has he said of you? What has, you understand? I will learn to nations. I am blessed when I am locked in. I am blessed when I am locked down. I am blessed. Do you understand? Like I am blessed outside. Watch it. Oh, go and find the words that God has spoken. At his word, begin to rejoice. At his word, begin to rejoice. These guys began to rejoice. His word is all they needed. What has God spoken to you? Okay, the, the year began. Okay, fine. The year began before this corner thing came. And also, you go back to your books and, and review and say, hey, God, this thing will come to pass. You said it, meaning you said it, you know the end of the matter. So I can begin to praise you now because I know how it ends. I'm reminding somebody here today who has forgotten the words that God told them. Hmm? So for you only waiting to praise after. No, 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 no. Yes, they praised after. But also before. The victory was as much before as it was after. Because the word of the Lord is sure. The word of the Lord can be trusted. The victory is the same. And that's why you guys, Thanksgiving helps us to keep an awareness of what God is doing. Helps us to continue to see what God is doing. So guys, begin to praise. Now, what has God been telling you in, in private? What has God told you through the prophets? Believe his word and you will be established. Eh? And so, one of the ways to show that I believe his word is to begin to rejoice. Is to begin to live without a care in the world because he has said, I will take care of you. Do you understand? God will take care of us. Begin to rejoice at his word. And here is the way I'm going to end it. And then just ask for some people. Here, this is where, you know, you know, eh? like guys, I think it's, I think I want to win with God. Because I'm just going to show you how we win. Like guys, this is just so exciting. Like, oh boy, I'm really enjoying, as in I'm really enjoying. I even wish I'd, I'd asked for more minutes because I'm really enjoying. Whoa. So guys, just first listen, first listen, first listen, first listen, first listen, first listen, first listen. So time comes for winning. Eh? How is this thing? So this is how, this is how. Now the first thing I wrote, eh, we are going to read together. We are going to read together and you're going to see. I wrote, eh, guys, guys, in this season, I want you to remember this, that winning with God is extravagant. I'll say that again. Winning with God is extravagant. Remember in the beginning, I began by telling you guys, me, I like winning. Now I realize that when I am with God, when I win, I don't just win by a whisker. No, 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 no. It is almost unnecessary. When God wins, when you win with God, my friend, eh, he goes all out. People are like, now nah, what's your just? What's your just? He doesn't win by a whisker. Oh, oh boy, we almost got caught. And I want us to read it and see what happened. When just so, then, huh? then I want you to see how, how, first of all, it's just so funny how God, how God fights battles. Like I think... It's just so funny. Different story. There are some people in the Bible where he won by making a wall fall on them. Or just, but as in, if he has said he's going to do it, he, I think he just finds a way. See how he, he defeated these guys. When they began to sing praise to the Lord, he set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who came against Judah and they, and they were defeated. <clears throat> For the people of Ammon stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And then when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. Remember, the enemies mixed up themselves and killed themselves and you see when judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness they looked they looked towards the multitude and they were there 
and, and there were their diseased bodies fallen on the earth. None had escaped. Now you see how God wins. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them, what? An abundance of, va of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry. And they were there three days gathering spoil because there was so much. Guys, guys, guys. There was so much, as in you guys, me, I want to win with God. As in, winning with God is just crazy. It's crazy. It's extravagant. And so, I want you to, guys, like, you're not coming out of this season the way you went in. Do you understand? Eh? You're not, I'm, I'm not coming out of this season the way I went in. I have to come out of this season and people say, Naya Kweli, for you, didn't you? experience corona why because the blessings are too many you went in with okay the joy was on is the levels now the joy is abundant you went in okay you were a little bit wise now you've grown in wisdom why because you're reading books like you're going to come out of this season which the devil thought was a loss and you're going to have grown so much he was i mean he, not then right now he's already regretting why he moved a lockdown on the children of god why because because we win with god the way we come out is extreme it is extreme we win extravagantly these guys didn't just win of oh wow we've defeated the guys now oh just uh, 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 guys go and sleep no 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 he ensured that they won and not only did they win they accumulated valuables to three days now you guys first picture three days three days mugging spoil three days meanwhile you didn't fight anything please understand this you didn't fight anything but not only have you won you've won extra like wow wow winning with god is extravagant and so if you're here today and you're in this corona battle i hear corona battle why have i even called it a corona battle i think i'm just excited now words are coming out but you guys seriously if you're here today and you're in this season and you are seeking god and you're holding on to him and you're trusting him to give you victory i have news for you today that you're not just going to win you're going to win extravagantly you're going to get out of this season and you're just like wow just wow so now listen in and start doing the things god is saying if he says plant acres and acres of the word plant them read books add value to yourself read them what do you understand because when you come out of this season you won't have just oh you, you do understand it like wow it's like how oh, you had let me say in this season you had maybe you had planned your cut five million to take you through corona and so you're going to come out of corona with your car last 100k that oh god thank you that 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 the corona ended with my car at least i hadn't run out of money i had one car no that's winning by a whisker winning extravagantly means that not only do you not spend your savings but during a season where there should be drought you're experiencing the blessing of god and instead you're increasing and increasing and you're getting more and more money coming so you entered with savings of like how many millions you're going in with you're coming out of a season that should have been of famine and you're coming out with much more than you went in with why because winning with god is extravagant it doesn't mean so it's not that car winning of oka bambi bambi I, I i almost didn't make it no 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 these guys one extravagantly and friends that's the value of the benefit of seeking the lord why because this guy had a multitude remember i shared with you earlier jehoshaphat had heard things man he wasn't just there he wasn't just there some kapua king no 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 he had thousands of men of war so he knew he probably was like these guys can give me some victory but then this god that i've been reading about and i've been worshiping i think i want his victory better so i'm inviting you friends seek the lord and expect extravagant winning in this season not just winning coming out of this car season is there is there what no 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 extravagantly why our boss is in the lord our god who makes us strong and gives us victory winning with god is extravagant and so because we are holding on to god in this season we are going to come out 10 times better and we are like what because you guys think about it mugging spells for three days on top of winning moreover guys who killed themselves like wow god like he had to make a point because think about it if you had just killed them and maybe there were no spoils on them they'd still be happy but he said ah, 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 ah. i don't win like that i win i go extra so friends today hold on to god expect to win extravagantly in this season okay before i go i think it's time let me first hey 
it's two minutes past time so i'm going to give it three minutes i'm going to ask for some feedback and just to hear what god is saying to you i've shared a number of things but i know that as the journey of the story was going you've learned something god has spoken to you particularly about something so please share for the next three minutes and i'll read some of them out before we go thank you for joining us judith thank you amina for being here samuel ahomoza barbara i see you i see you thank you auntie claire claire uh, leticia kezabu thank you for being here rachel mutakoha wellen dorothy thank you guys for being here Thank you for being here. Just share one or two things that stood out for you just before I leave. Pibanange ka love busting kalaba kale muebale muebale nyo muebale le dala. Oh, let me just trust that you're typing before I close. Just share one or two things that stood out for you that stood out for you before we roll. Anybody? Yeah, guys. <coughs> oh, thank you, Pastor Mose. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Winning with God is extravagant. We wow, wow, rejoice at his word. Praise before victory. Expect to win extravagantly. Yeah, you guys. Don't expect to come out of Corona. Oh, wow. Oh, my savings almost got finished. No, 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 no. Expect that God is going to provide for you in this season for you to save more. <laughs> anyway. Winning with God is extravagant. I'm going to come out of this an extravagant winner. We wow, wow. Are you calling the, your message? But they are going to that being with God, eh, you don't come out no vida mawo. People are going to ask you na yemwe. Corona maji semu. Nga business ye booma. Do you understand? Like as in yes, expect, expect that when God comes through for you, eh, it's 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 beyond. It's beyond. I mean, guys, spoils for three days. What's the deal? Yeah, expect to win extravagantly. Yes, Liz, expect to increasing and winning. Winning extravagantly. Yes, Pastor Mose. Boy, it was fun. Yeah, even me now, I expect to win extravagantly. Like some more, I'm going to fact go back and first be on that coward. Keep my eyes on God through this season. Winning with God is extravagant. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Thank you so much, Maggie, for being here. Thank you so much, friends, for tuning in today. It was fun. It was good. And see you again next time. God bless you. Bye.